Hello everyone! The topic of today's video comes as a result of me reading a lot over the course of the past few months. I've been an avid reader at various points in my life, particularly during my childhood and late teens, and recently I've felt the urge to, if only for a few hours, use books to distract myself from the ever more convincing goal our society seems to have of tearing itself apart. I mostly chose to read fantasy and science fiction books, but what I very quickly came to realize is that nowadays, even in fantasy, there's little hope of escaping at least as far as modern fantasy books are concerned. Like movies, television, and gaming, nearly everything bears a flagrant political mark. Mind you, there's nothing inherently wrong with being political. Everyone has a right to their beliefs, and I wouldn't be bothered were it not for the fact that the majority of it comes off as insincere. By this I mean that the rules have been set. Despite your personal beliefs, if you don't abide by certain rules, you'll never be successful, or at the very least, you'll never be accepted by the mainstream. So that's why it's hard to believe in the words of most of these authors. Because even if these authors' words are sincere, you know they have no choice but to write them. So the books come off as tired and uninspired at best, and at worst, a lie. A lie that reeks of fear and desperation to please, and produces little more than colorless, tasteless characters and stories, most of which will never stay on the test of time. In today's video, we're going to take a tour of the writing industry and examine how it's changing as a consequence of political correctness. However, since the writing industry as a whole is extremely broad, I'm going to focus this video primarily on the young adult branch, which is one of the most popular and lucrative branches of the industry. But before we get started, I just want to quickly mention that if you would like a signed copy of my new book, Book, I have just 15 hardcover and 15 paperback copies left. And once they're gone, I will no longer be offering signed copies anymore. Furthermore, I've marked the price down for this last batch of signed copies because I'd like to get rid of them as soon as possible since traveling with them is quite expensive. So again, if you would like a signed copy of my book with free domestic or international shipping, now is your last chance to get one. The link to my website where you can order one is in the description of this video. Okay, so now back to the topic at hand. To set the scene, I'll just give a bit of a rundown about how things in the writing industry work. Once you've finished writing your manuscript, you generally send a submission letter, including the first few pages of your manuscript, to multiple literary agents of your choice. If a literary agent enjoys the first few pages of your manuscript, he or she will request the full manuscript and then make a decision regarding whether or not they want to offer you representation. The main problem that my twin sister and I observed during this process, when we were trying to get our own book published back in 2015, was that the literary agents often had checklists on their websites, discussing the types of themes they were looking for in the books that they personally wished to represent. The common themes that my twin sister and I saw were themes such as social justice, diversity, LGBT, and strong female characters, and so on. This was all bearable up to a point. But from what I could perceive, the demands of the young adult industry only became more and more stringent as time went on. For example, there was an initial demand for diverse characters, but soon it became an issue if a white author included a black character because how dare a white author pretend to understand the experiences of a black person. But on the other hand, if a white author only included white characters in their book, or if they, heaven forbid, had a minority as their villain, then they'd be accused of being racist. Just a few of the many popular authors who have been criticized for not quote-unquote living up to the rules of political correctness are Sarah J. Maas and Maggie Stiefvater. Starting with Sarah J. Maas, her most popular series is the Throne of Glass series, which includes seven books, the first of which sold over one million copies alone. Mass found herself in hot water a few years ago for not living up to the diversity standard. An article from a site called Affinity Magazine claimed, quote, Authors like Sarah J. Mass and Maggie Stiefvater are wildly popular in the book community, and they really shouldn't be. Sarah J. Mass is the perfect example of an author who uses the white savior trope in her book series Throne of Glass. She also killed off the only two women of color in the series. Maggie Stiefvater's most popular series are entitled the Wolves of Mercy Falls and The Raven Cycle. The same article from Affinity Magazine claimed, quote, As for Maggie Stiefvater, she's just plain racist. In The Raven King, the final installment of her book series, The Raven Boys, two of her white characters mock Henry Cheng's voice. Henry is half Korean, half Chinese, and it sparked an outrage among readers of color because, contextually, it can be taken as the characters mocking his accent. Given the radicalization of pretty much every medium of the entertainment industry, a lot of people 
might not find accusations such as these surprising, but what some might find surprising is that their efforts have come full circle. They're now even going so far as to persecute writers who are themselves minorities. Recently, a contributor to New York Magazine, a man by the name of Jesse Single, published a four-part series of articles detailing the nightmarish prison in which the young adult writing industry has locked itself. Jesse's articles showcase that in the last few months alone, the outrage from young adult book readers on Twitter has caused not one, but two minority authors to choose to unpublish books that they had already completed. First, Emily Zhao's Blood Air, which was accused of anti-Black racism because YA Twitter decided, on the basis of rather questionable evidence, that a racially ambiguous character was Black, and didn't like how she was treated in light of that assumption. And then, Kosoko Jackson's A Place for Wolves, which was accused of being offensive for focusing on American teenagers during the Kosovo War, and its attendant human rights atrocities, and for having a Muslim villain. Both authors ended up releasing statements, apologizing to the book community, and explaining that they would not go forward with publishing their books. Personally, I found myself a bit conflicted while reading these statements. Firstly, I wasn't surprised at all that these authors had been attacked, because I've seen firsthand the utter inability of the leftist mob to refrain from destroying anything that even remotely falls outside their personal framework of what quote-unquote is acceptable nowadays. Secondly, like many others, I'm really disappointed that these authors chose to cave. In my opinion, they should have ignored the backlash and stood by their books. Showing the mob that they wouldn't allow themselves to be dictated by their whims would have both weakened the mob and given these authors a better chance at writing and publishing what they wish to publish in the future. But by caving, and even worse, apologizing, these authors are not only agreeing with the injustice thrust upon them, but they're also opening their future work to being controlled by the mob. And lastly, I do have to admit that, at least for me personally, these statements were really sad for me to read. Having once been in the writing industry myself, I can vividly imagine how excited and happy these authors must have been to reach their dream of traditional publication, only to have their dream dashed to bits by a fanatical mob, most of which had come to his hysterical conclusions about their books without even ever having read them. Basically, what generally happens is that advanced reader copies, also known as ARCs, are sent out to reviewers ahead of the scheduled publication date in order to garner publicity for the book. A few of these advanced readers apparently took issue with a few things in these authors' books, wrote insane reviews, and then these reviews circulated on Twitter, causing all hell to break loose, with the result being that both authors opted not to publish their books. Now, if this wasn't enough to characterize the young adult writing in industry is deranged, there are also claims that a secret list has been made with the names of writers who have been deemed quote-unquote enemies of people of color. In other words, it's a type of blacklist compiled by literary agents and other people in the industry with the names of authors who they personally deem as racist. One literary agent by the name of Barry Goldblatt seemed to confirm the existence of this list in a tweet that said, yup, and it ate a short list. So essentially, the young adult writing industry has devolved into a climate where no one, not even minority authors, are safe from the hammer of political correctness. To make matters worse, there are also claims that many people in the industry, quote, keep screenshots of conversations, just in case they ever need to publicly destroy someone. In an alleged email to Jesse Single, who is the author of the series of articles about this situation, a published young adult fantasy author says, I'm sending you this because I believe the community needs to change. It's it's destroying itself. What started out as, in my opinion, an important effort to diversify books for children has become embroiled in far too much public grandstanding and private backstabbing. Debut authors, the targets of a majority of the latest callouts, do not have the industry or social clout within the community to push back or really to even recover career-wise from canceling their books. It's even more difficult when they are marginalized people themselves. People in the YA community obsess over receipts. They keep screenshots of conversations just in case they ever need to publicly destroy someone, carefully cultivated public personas are common. If secrets are a form of currency, then coming off as a friendly person is intended to get people to open up to you. It is an industry where a lot of people have quote, allies instead of, quote, friends, and they are perfectly willing to throw those people under the bus in order to maintain social clout within the community. The people who do value friendships are the quiet ones. We're not here to grandstand. We're here to write books. But what you see on YA Twitter is really just what they're willing to put out in public. 
The private stuff is very personal and it cuts very deeply. In this industry, you have to be careful who you open up to because you never know when the details of your life are going to become gossip fodder. While I could obviously utilize dozens more examples to showcase the deterioration of the young adult writing industry, in an effort to make this video a reasonable length, I'll end on a final point. And this point is the ever-increasing implementation of morals clauses into author contracts. The Authors Guild recently wrote an article on the matter saying, The Authors Guild objects to publishers' new and increasing use of so-called morals clauses. These contract provisions allow publishers to terminate a book contract and in many cases even require the author to repay portions of the advance already received if the author is accused of immoral, illegal, or publicly condemned behavior. Publishers insist they need the clauses to protect themselves in the event an author's reputation becomes so tarnished after after the book contract is signed that it will hurt sales. But most of these clauses are too broad and allow a publisher to terminate based on individual accusations or the vague notion of public condemnation, which can occur all too easily in these days of viral social media. So basically, these morals clauses are paving the way for the termination of authors' contracts based on quote-unquote public condemnation, which, as we've seen in the case of Emil Zhao and Kosoko Jackson, could occur simply if advanced reviewers take issue with something the author has written in their books and decides to stir up a mob against them. From what I can tell, much of the young adult writing industry is now running on fear. Fear of writing the wrong thing, tweeting the wrong thing, trusting the wrong person, and so on. This is obviously the worst type of climate to produce good literature. Like many other entertainment-related professions, being an author nowadays comes with a large set of risks. It's like perpetually walking on thin ice that can at any moment crack and swallow you up. And it's becoming increasingly difficult for me personally to comprehend how any sane person would willingly be a part of it. But on the other hand, I do have to say that this situation is hardly surprising. Due to the blatant agendas and infant-like sensitivity of those pulling the strings in the writing industry, we've been forced to surrender the principle, the long-held principle, that writing books should challenge the authors and that reading books should challenge the readers. Ideas that fall outside of the mainstream, controversial characters, and the liberty to make people uncomfortable are becoming all but forbidden. While having such freedoms won't always make for good stories, it'll definitely make for unique ones, and it'll also pave the way for that rare book that always eventually comes along and inspires a generation. In closing, write what you want to write, not what the dominant culture or the higher-ups want you to write. These kinds of stories will be most welcome in a world that's steadily being leached of its color, becoming grayer and grayer and grayer by the day. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, please do consider leaving me a tip via PayPal because the vast majority of my videos are all demonetized these days. Even just as I upload them, they get demonetized. So I would really appreciate any and all support. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next time.